Hey, Miguel, I'm recently struggling to decide whether or not I should stay with my anthropology major, 10% odds, or go into insurance where I can make good money with my mom. With your mom? You and your mom gonna commit insurance fraud? <laughs> Are you gonna have her walk up to a building and sell them fire insurance and then you fucking torch the place? Is this all part of your fucking scheme? Do you have like a fucking matchstick women type beat? Oh, it's a Nepo hire. Your mom owns Allstate Insurance and you're going to be the new it's in your hands guy. Uh, yeah, listen, uh, realistically, I got to be honest with you. I just saw a very interesting chart that maybe is relevant to this discussion. The U.S. college majors with highest unemployment rates. We got number one, art history, 62% underemployed. So this is the unemployment rate. This is no job at all. And this is underemployment, which means a job that probably didn't require your degree. Hypothetically, for example, if you worked at Starbucks after the degree, you wouldn't be using your art history degree. Art history, liberal arts, fine arts, aerospace, high unemployment, low underemployment. What this probably means is that there is very few firms in aero, like it's all Boeing and you know a couple other places. This means it's probably very few corporations you can work for. So you, if you get a job there, you're good. Uh, history, pretty high underemployment, English language, mass media, physics. So again, I don't see your specific major on there, but I can imagine it falls in these type of buckets which are tougher to get a job in right now, specifically if you wanna work in that field. So, uh, you know, worth noting. That being said, I, I mean, it's tough, to, it's tough to ask someone to, to turn against the tide of society. <laughs> to me, it's a little sad that we are like, the number of people that are abandoning these majors in droves is very high. Like history in some schools is like, they're not even having enough people to, to do a full program anymore. Because people are, you know, making the rational choice of trying to move into areas that can get them more guaranteed income. But it kind of sucks that college is just becoming like a certificate program for employment. The idea of a place for higher learning or study is, is sort of being shuffled away, which is not cool. That being said, I can tell you that's bad and shake my fist at it, but you still have to eat. <laughs> and so, you know, you taking a noble stand is not necessarily cool. I don't know. Uh, listen, brother, if you want me to tell you what honestly has better odds of making money, being a Nepo baby in insurance <laughs> sounds like it has way more profit potential than like striking it out on your own in anthropology. I, I just want to be real. I want to be real that you will make more money probably with a connection in a established in in industry. But if you're going to KYS in Minecraft having to do it, then it's not worth it. So it's tough to give you a straight answer, bro. It really depends on your, how you fall in that spectrum of like how much you want stability and money versus how willing you are to uh, sacrifice some of that to chase what you like. What would you suggest someone going into college study? Everyone pushed CS hard, now no one's able to get a job. Uh, there is a bit of a CS glut right now, though I don't think no one is able to get a job. There's been like a bunch of tech layoffs, so it's like a difficult time. There's probably a stat you can find. It's tough because the world changes, you know? Whatever the hot major is now becomes the oversaturated major by the time you finish it. <laughs> that's how it works, you know? I, I, I'd say there's some shit that's been pretty timeless and you should find something related to that that you have an interest in, get good at it, and uh, gives you a good base of knowledge to adapt to the modern world. I guess I wouldn't get something so hyper-specific unless you're sure you want to work in that. Do you really think the pay is that important? Pay is basically more. I mean, I think for most college students, whether they say it or not, they are looking for a well-paying job. Yeah, I, I think that is what they want after they graduate. Whether or not they'll admit it or whether they'll, I think that is what they want from their degree, uh, especially the one that costs so much. It may not be entirely the point, but it is a big part of the point is that they want to go there so it makes more money when they get out. I don't think that's that crazy. I'm just addicted to burning money and being in massive debt. <laughs> I just love it, dude. I mean, there's something to be said for like the formative experiences of college, regardless of the, you know, the socialization, the parties, the freedom, you know, all that stuff. Clubs, making friends, the Zans, the... <laughs> Bro didn't have COVID lockdowns. I mean, I had sophomore and junior year, my own particular COVID. <laughs> it's called League of Legends, all right? And it locked me down real good. So I only enjoyed the socialization freshman and senior year. Some might say it's worse than COVID. Exactly, exactly, dude. 
nothing like 1000 plus percent interest on my payments that doesn't i don't believe you <laughs> i <laughs> loan sharks don't do a thousand percent bro wait a thousand percent did you fucking go to jimmy two toes in the mob who the fuck gave you a thousand percent interest loan paying for education is so cringe european european you don't know the benefit you don't know the fucking thrill you don't know the thrill of checking the interest balance on your student loan debt. EU frogs not knowing the freedom of crippling debt. <laughs> exactly, dude. It's kind of embarrassing in a way. Is crypto back now for good and forever? Yeah, man, never gonna go down again. Get your money in, King. For good and forever, dog with hat. You think a dog with a hat is not gonna make you money? It's not gonna get, it's not gonna moon? You're crazy. What meme coin is the way out? <laughs> This is like the 2020s in a fucking nutshell, dude. <laughs> We're watching a video on crippling student debt. People asking what meme coin is the way out. <laughs> Put that in my veins, dude. I love this shit. Put your student loans on meme coin. Put your meme coin on Klarna. Put your Klarna on Afterpay and put that on DraftKings, baby. Keep the cycle moving. We are back. We never left. Do you read the newspaper, Boomer? Yes, <laughs> I do. I read the newspaper today. I read a physical copy of the Financial Times. Yeah, a physical one. <laughs> There's a bunch of them piled up. Let's see what's in the old paper today. Plunging price of China's lab monkeys highlights slowdown in drug research. The price of lab monkeys in China has plummeted. If you guys want a cheap lab monkey, you can get it from China. That's interesting. The monkey prices have been on a roller coaster ride over the past few years. <laughs> How much does a monkey cost? Let's find out. What? Okay, in 2019, you could buy a lab monkey for $4,000. Pretty expensive, right? By 2022, lab monkeys cost 26,000 per. That means one of the greatest things you could have invested in was lab monkeys. You could have just bought a bunch of monkeys in 2019 and the value would have fucking mooned. But now they've dropped back down to 11,000. So you should have sold at the top. That's crazy. What a roller coaster of monkey prices. Warner Brothers sees path out of wilderness with Dune. The opening of Dune Part 2 made $90 million, giving a vital lift to struggling cinema owners, including the film's co-producer Warner Brothers Discovery, which has been laid low by a series of big flops recently. <laughs> It is now banking on a big return from the cost of making this $190 million sci-fi epic. I feel like reading the paper to us is an NL bit or something. If I did it, it's not a bit. <laughs> it's just me reading the paper. It's not, a, it's not an elaborate joke. I just want to read the paper. What's a sport you wouldn't let your kid play? League of Legends. <laughs> I would let my kid play football without a helmet for 12 years rather than one fucking solo queue game. And that's on God. Also, here's a controversial take I have. Ooh, this is gonna fucking rattle some brains. Chess is just a game. <laughs> and in fact, if you are someone who is addicted to chess, you are not building your brain to become an overall smarter person. <laughs> You're just getting better at chess like you are playing another game. It doesn't make you smart. <laughs> If someone is like studying for eight hours a day and someone is playing chess for eight hours, they're not both getting smart. One of them is just fucking grinding chess. It is as much of a waste of time as the other game. It's, I mean, it's fine, it's fun. You know, maybe you get some spatial reasoning, but it's not like, I think this is, I think chess has like marketed itself well. <laughs> I think because of like how in the old days, like kings would play it and stuff, like it has created this air of mystery, but really nowadays, like it's just people grinding chess on their phones and it's just like grinding any other game. They, just, they rage at it like they're playing solo queue. I genuinely feel like any FPS game is better for your brain. Okay, now you're getting fucking crazy. <laughs> This dude just wants to fucking yell slurs and see us go, and he's fucking mad. Chess.com banned him for that, and so he's... No, no, dude. I don't think... I don't think playing fucking COD <laughs> is better for your brain.